Scrappy Creations, where we sew the scraps of your life into beautiful creations. Grab your scraps, grab your charm packs, because I have a great project for you. You ever use a charm pack and you have a few left over? Or maybe you just have some small scraps of fabric laying around. Well, let's take a look at some adorable pin cushions. Now these have a button in the center and they're sewn down so they look so nice and it squishes your, your uh, filling so that it bunches out around. They're perfect for your pins. Now you can fill this with polyfill as I did. You could fill it with walnut shells and there are all crushed walnut shells. <laughs> there are all kinds of things that you can fill these with, but aren't they adorable? I love these. And it's a good use, it's a good way to use up some of those buttons. And as we'll talk later on, I know you have a stash of buttons because we all do. And I had so much fun looking through the buttons <laughs> for this project. Oh, I have my heart upside down. <laughs> okay, would you like to know how to make these? We're going to go over to the cutting table and get started. I will list all the measurements and supplies below in the description box, and we're going to make some pin cushions. Let's go have some sewing fun together, okay? Here we go. Let's take a look at what we're going to need. You are going to need two squares of fabric. These measure five and a half inches. Now this one measured five inches, so you could use a charm pack, and this is certainly an acceptable size. It measures just about, what, two and a quarter by two and a quarter, right there. That was cut with five inch squares. This was made with a rectangle, of course, and it measures just about four and a quarter by three. And I cut that at five and a half or five and a half by seven and a half to reach that size. All right. But what we're going to do right now is cut two at five and a half inches square. Then you're going to need two pieces of fusible fleece. Now, this is not overly thick. It is Pelon 987. So Pelon 987 is what I'm using. Use whatever you have on hand. If you have something that's a little thicker, you can use that. All right. So you're also going to need polyfill. Of course, you would need more than this. This is a representation. Or you could use rice, uh, crushed walnut shells, beads. There's all kinds of things. And I know some people don't like to use rice. I've used it without any issue, but I understand it, it can, I guess, get bugs or something. But I think it might depend on where you live, the climate. But either way, use whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you like to use for that. You're going to need a button, all right, for your center. Uh, so you'll need the button and you will need something to make this tuft because it's gonna take some, some strong stuff. This is what I chose to use, which is crochet thread. I think it's also called pearl cotton. You could use embroidery floss. You could use, this is button thread. It says button, button and craft thread. I don't know if you can see that. But either way, it says button and craft, dual duty plus. That would work. Or you could use a few, few strands. I would use four if, if Believe me, this has got to be strong to, to make it for this. You, you can't just use a regular thread and, and hope it turns out well because it, it's not going to hold it. Okay, then the next thing you're going to need is a large needle. I think they call these a tapestry needle. Uh, mine isn't quite long enough, 
but I mean, I'm making do with it. Uh, but my longer one actually had a huge eye on it and I couldn't get it to go through my fabric. So this one that I use, that's about two and a quarter inches. And you're going to need a regular sewing needle. Just whatever you, whatever size you like to sew with because we will be sewing a ladder stitch. All right, the next thing you will need is a fabric marker, one that disappears or that you can wipe off because we are going to be making a small mark on our fabric. You'll need some sort of thimble or gripper. I found this especially helpful for grabbing the needle. It's just kind of like a, a rubber thimble. It's not very protective as far as the needle going through, but you can use a leather thimble, a metal one, whatever you have, but you might need a gripper. And if you don't have something like this, if you have a piece of shelf liner, that would work too. Anything that you can grip that needle with would be great. We're going to use a quarter inch foot on our machine. You're going to need the usual. I found this very handy. This is a one inch by six inch ruler. Of course, you can do the same thing with a regular one, but working in small spaces, I found this one especially helpful. And other than the usual, I mean, you're going to need your sewing machine, thread, scissors, rotary cutter, ruler, iron, all that sort of stuff. All right, so let's get going. The first thing we will do is take care of our fabric. Now I cut these at five and a half, and I apologize if I said this wrong, but I cut these at five and a quarter. So they're just slightly smaller. And the only reason I do that is I don't have to worry about it being getting stuck to my iron or my ironing board. So you take the rough side, the glue side, and you put it against the back side of the fabric just kind of center it you can just eyeball it and then i turn them like this and i have my steam on about halfway on my iron with most fusibles i find that steam does help you don't have to really rub the iron along there just Hold it and press. And the heat and the steam does all the work for you. Just like that. I made an oopsie. I forgot something. So I have another pin cushion that's all, it has the uh, fusible fleece on the back. We need to find our center. Now this block, this square here is five inches. So I'm going to be at two and a half. So right at two and a half over and in, I want you to make a little mark because that's the center where your, but your button is going to go. Now, because I haven't decided which side I want the button on, I'm going to mark both. I apologize for being forgetful, but you can see what I did there. I made a mark and that's where our button will go. And I mean, you can kind of measure it after it's put together, but it's much easier to do it right here and make sure you're using a disappearing ink marker of some sort. Or if you don't have one, you could also pin it which is what I used to do. I'd put one pin one way and one another to do the same, the same thing. Okay, now back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> Hold it and press. And the heat and the steam does all the work for you. 
just like that. I am going to shut that off or else it will beep at me because it always beeps at me. Oh, and I might not have mentioned, but you need a regular pen too, as well as the uh, disappearing marker pen. Okay, we can get rid of our ironing board. And I'm going to take that little tiny ruler that I had, and I am going to measure from the outside of the fabric, not the not the uh, fusible, but from the outside of the fabric, I'm measuring one inch along all four corners. Pretty simple and straightforward. Do it to both pieces and you could experiment uh plus i was thinking of whoops three quarters of an inch oh and i did go one and a half inch squares on this cut out like where i am right here i on that larger one i cut out one and a half inches because i made some of these similar fairly similar before but I just had the idea that this would be a cute little project. <laughs> I'll give you a close-up of that, the fabric that I used. So this is just some sewing print fabric whoops, that I've had for a while. And I love that little button in there. Handmade for you with love. And then this is from my Lorelei Harris fabric that I just got a couple of weeks ago. And it had buttons on it, so I thought, well, a button's going in the center, so that's perfect. And then this, as you can see, has sewing needles and looks like stitches. Okay, so now we're going to cut our squares out. And you might do that with a rotary cutter. I can't. I'm not that talented with a rotary cutter, so I stick to the basics. But whatever you can do or want to do, you take care of that and you do that. Okay, one more. And we'll be on our way. I just had a, a winter weather advisory come across my, well, I won't say her name, A-L-E-X-A. -E and I guess we're going to get more snow. And before we take this over to the sewing machine, I want to say that I used quite a tight stitch with this. I used a 1.8 millimeter stitch because if you don't, then the stitches will show right here because you're stuffing this and you're forcing a lot of polyfill or whatever you use against those seams, okay? Um, so we're going to fold these. You're going to fold this corner Oops, now I need my pin cushion back. So you're going to fold these like this. Just match up your fabric. And I pin two sides at a time before I go to the machine. Nothing too difficult so far, right? Thought you guys might like something different. And these do make fabulous gifts and you know, they're quick and easy. 
They're fun to make. You could make some ahead of time for a craft fair or for gifts, maybe for your quilting guild or something. All right, we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew one quarter inch on both of those pinned edges. So I'm going to make a mark just so that you can see. You're going to sew. You're going to back tack, sew, and back tack right there. You're going to do that on both of these sides. And meet me back here. Don't go away. All right. Those are some short seams right there. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Kind of looks like a gravy boat. <laughs> now you're going to fold it the other way. Line up your edges again and pin them. Just like this. And we're going to sew these ones next. Right, sew these with a quarter inch, just like we did before. Done with that little ruler. Okay, now you should have what looks like two little boxes, just like that. Okay, now I trimmed these just a little bit at the bottom maybe it doesn't make a difference but that's what i did you can do it if you want i don't think it's serious if you don't but i felt like it might help it to go together a little better i did trim my seams on this one and then not on this one as far as like trimming the whole thing it really didn't make a difference on that either so we won't do that. I'm not going to do it right now. Okay, so you leave one how it is, and then flip the other one like this. Okay? We're going to put these right sides facing. And by the way, isn't that pretty fabric? My friend Nanny B sent me this from Australia in the first package she sent me. And I know she told me the name of these flowers, but I don't remember. It is beautiful fabric. I've used a few pieces of it, but I thought it would make a perfect pin cushion. Okay, and I'm going to nest my seams at the corners, just like you would with a quilt, a quilt block. Keeps everything nice and neat. If you nest them, you know they'll go together well. Just place a pin and you're probably wondering how we are going to get this on the sewing machine. But I did it without removing my free arm because we're just going to sew it. Uh, I'll show you here in just a second the angle. I just got to get these pins in here. Before we go any further, we need to leave an opening, okay? So come over a little bit, you, probably about three quarters of an inch, I'd say, from that edge. And make sure your fabrics are lined up. And then come over about three quarters of an inch from the other edge. So I'm marking my opening with these different pins so that I know the difference. Now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to uh, kind of squish it like this and sew this way because you, you might be able to get it on this way, I suppose, 
but it's not going to go over the end of your free arm. Either way you go, you're going to have to squish it and flatten it like this in order to sew. So take it to your machine, back tack at the beginning of your pin or your mark, using a quarter inch seam allowance, and sew all the way around to the next mark or pin and back tack, and then meet me right back here. And this is what it should look like at this point in time. Before we turn it right side out, I'm going to snip right before the seam. So, so before, after, and then right in the middle. Just don't get real close to that stitch line. I mean, you want somewhat close, but you don't want to cut it. <laughs> We don't need to have to go back and sew again. All right, now we're going to find our opening and flip this right side out. And yes, it's a small opening, but you can do it. Now push your finger into the further end and then take your thumb and push that out through. And it should be just, you know, it, it's snug, but it will work. You can do this. I have faith in you. Every time. All right. I have my pokey tool, which just makes it a little nicer and a little easier. Oops, where's my opening? To get all my corners. Those pesky threads are everywhere. I tried trimming them, but, you know, they're everywhere. Okay, and we kind of have a box shape. And I go over to the iron at this point. Oops. And I fold this in a quarter inch. I guess I should turn my iron on. I turn this under a quarter inch and I'm going to press. Now you could finger press that if you want. I'm going to take it over to the iron because when we go to do the ladder stitch, I like to have a nice line and know where my seam is supposed to be. And that's the reasoning for that. So I'll do that. All right, I have this ironed. It just neatens that up a little bit. Okay, now we're going to put whatever you've chosen to put in. I'm using polyfill because I do not have any crushed walnut shells. And my polyfill is an actual pillow from Walmart. And if you wonder why, instead of polyfill, I stopped buying polyfill because this is the same stuff and it's cheaper. <laughs> if you buy a 16 ounce, so a one pound bag of polyfill at Walmart, it's $5.37. But you can buy a 16 ounce or one pound pillow for $3.44. So you're saving just under $2 for every pound of polyfill. And a pound of polyfill really doesn't go that far if you if you make pillows, you know, like decorative throw pillows or what have you. All right, when you put this in here, make sure that you poke it out to your corners really well. I always do the corners first, and I try not to use too much at a time. It does work better if you stuff a little bit at a time. I thought about using a yellow button on this, but then when I saw the green, I thought, no, that, that green button is going to match really well. It has almost a stone look to it. I don't know if you can see that, but it almost looks like gravel on there. So, 
I don't have a large opening, as you know, so I'm just poking that in there, grabbing more polyfill. Takes quite a bit. I've also made uh, pin cushions where I put rice or beads along the bottom and then filled the rest with polyfill so that there was, you know, a, a weight at the base of it. Get some over in that further corner. Because these little pin cushions look better if they're overstuffed because then when you tighten that thread down it really shows it it looks like uh oh when i was a kid they used to have the the footrest the hassock is what we called them and they always had that great big button in the middle and it was it went at the bottom of your chair for you to put your feet on and that's what these remind me of all right so you want it nice and firm Poke it in all your corners, and then usually you'll have a little opening right there that you need to fill in before we start sewing. And we're going to use what's called a ladder stitch. I think it's also called an invisible stitch, but don't quote me on that. I know how to do it, but I don't know how to name it. All right, let me get rid of my polyfill. I have a piece of thread, and this is doubled over. Oops, can you see the, whoops, I have a loop. Not sure which needle I should use here. <laughs> I used to have a long, thin needle and I lost it. All right, so I have my loop because here's my two ends right here. I'll start again so I can show you. Here's one piece of thread. I know you can't see it, but bring your two ends together. Follow it down to the loop. Put the loop in the eye to thread the needle like that and bring the loop to the bottom. Okay, because we're going to make we don't need a knot if you do it this way. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is take and go through one side. I don't know how well this is going to pick this up or if I can zoom in. If I don't knock my tripod over, I don't dare mess with it too much. I need to get my first stitch. Can you see I'm just taking from one side and like I said we don't have a knot so carefully and then when you see that loop put your needle through the loop there now you don't need a knot now we're going to go over to the other side and catch just a little bit Then back to this side, Oops. catch a little bit, and you just go, whoops, sorry, it's kind of an awkward angle. Let me see if I can get this on my lap a little bit more, then maybe you can see better. It's one of those things that it's hard because the camera is on, you know, the phone is facing me, so I can't adjust it from here. All right. So I just keep going one side to another. And I will fast forward this part so you're not bored watching me do the ladder stitch.
Now to finish this off, I, I made a stitch at the end and I'm going to put my needle through that loop two times. Pull carefully, not quickly. And then I'm going to do it one more time. One more time for old time's sake. And just try to get a small area. Oh, I can't get my second one in there. To do it again, I guess. Just do it twice with one loop each. All right, now you can either cut that off or you can put your thread down in to hide it, which is what I choose to do. So go back in where you were. Just come out in another area. Now pull it tight. There. Now I'm going to show you where I stitched. It was along here. There's a few pieces of polyfill, which I know that's minor, but I will pull it with my tweezers to get it out of the way. But I think that's a pretty good closure. You, the only part you might be able to see is right there where I ended because it did kind of uh, get caught up, the threads against one another. Okay, now I am going to pause this and, well actually I guess I don't have to pause it. I have another piece and this is my uh, crochet cotton. Guess I've got a little more than what I need here and then take your tapestry needle we're going to do the same thing put the loop through the hole you would think this one would be easier there I got it so take the loop through the hole and pull it downward Leave your little tail up here. I'm going to put my leather thimble back in. Now, I didn't mark this, so I'm just going to eyeball the center. It's hard to come up exactly straight in the middle, but I don't think anyone's going to measure it. So grab that needle. This is where this gripper thing comes in handy. And if you had a piece of shelf liner, that would work too. Okay, now don't let your loop come through the other end. Okay, grab onto that. Pull this up a bit and then go down beside it. Okay, you don't want to go back in the same hole for sure because you'll defeat your purpose. Go down and then poke around until you see that the needle is probably an eighth to a quarter of an inch away from that beginning. I've got to hold it here. Oh, I dropped my gripper. Oh, there we go. Okay, now put that, put that needle through the loop before you lose it. Now, I want you to squeeze this together at the same time that you're pulling your cotton thread, okay? So I tightened it a little bit, I cinched it, and now I'm gonna hold down and squeeze and I'm going to pull that, okay? And you don't wanna pull hard enough to break your, your cotton, but, but you do want that tuft there, see? All right. And I haven't forgotten about the button. We will get to that. 
Now go back down in a different place. I mean, you don't want to keep repeating the same place. Just go pretty close. I need my gripper. It's imperative to have my gripper. Okay, and again, I'm going to pull it as I push with my finger and my thumb. Now my button. Button, button, who's got the button? Okay, up through and down the other in the other hole. Now you could use a four hole button. And I suppose you could use all four of the holes, but I would probably recommend not doing that. I would say to just use two of the holes, either diagonal or side to side. I would think diagonally would look the best, but I'm guessing because I haven't used one, so I don't know. But you do whatever you are comfortable with. All right, see how nice that's looking? All right, give that a pull. I'm going to go up through that button one more time because that's only one thread. Well, actually, it's two because we have it doubled. But this will be the tricky part is finding that. Oh, I got it. And I drop that again. Because that gripper is, I mean, you really have to have it because you're working through a lot of thicknesses here. And again, every time I do this, I hold down and give this thread a pull to get it nice and tight. Back down through. Because this is it. We're tying it off and we're done. All right. Now I'm going to take one strand out of there. So I only have one strand here. And I'm going to go grab up a little bit of fabric. And it is difficult because your, your area down here is pulled very tight, but that's how it should be. Okay, I just grabbed a little bit, a little, little bit of fabric. I have got to grab that thing again. Okay. Now I'll take these thimbles off my hand so I can feel something and actually make this work. Okay, so what these are is they're in two different spots because you, you brought one thread up through. So now you're going to tie it off. So do that slowly and follow your finger, follow the thread with your fingertips and push it down. Then I would tie it one more time. It probably wouldn't hurt to put a dab of glue in there. And then I'm going to snip those off. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Okay, look at that. We're all finished. I really like the way this one turned out. I knew that fabric would, would make a pretty pin cushion. It's beautiful fabric. So again, this one was made with a five inch block. So it's charm pack friendly. This one was cut at five and a half. And this one was five and a half by seven and a half. Now these both used a one inch corner cut out of them and this was one and a half but i i think they're a cute little project and you know they make a great gift for anyone that you know who sews <laughs> they're just cute and see the difference like i made it two different fabrics to see how it would look that way 
I don't know there there isn't a favorite I can't choose whether I like all one fabric or two different I don't know what do you think so the creative word of the day today is going to be button because it's a good time to dig into your button stash because I know you have one if I have a million buttons I know you have at least a few that you could rummage through and find in fact this one here was all wavy it's not flat it's it just kind of goes a little wonky and i thought that was so cute to put on this one and as i showed you this one says handmade for you with love and then this one had the look of gravel on the green so i really like that so again, our word of the day will be button. So for anyone new, the creative word of the day is something I give and you use it in, this, in a sentence below the video. Now, don't forget to click the thumbs up. You want to click the like button and leave a comment. And if you leave a comment with the creative word of the day in it, your name goes in a drawing for our monthly prize win. And if your name is chosen, I will get your mailing address and I send you something that is handmade by me exactly for you. Now, doesn't that sound fun? And if you haven't already joined us on Facebook, I invite you to look us up. Just type, go to Facebook, type in Marie's Scrappy Creations, or you will find a link below in the description box. All of the measurements will be below in the description box. Uh, feel free to ask questions. I'll get to the questions as soon as I can if you have any questions whatsoever. And feel free to share this video across your social medias. I really appreciate when you share it, whether it's on Facebook, Pinterest, wherever. It's great for you to share my videos and it really does help me out. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today in the sewing room. I really love to sew with you. And this is a very beginner friendly project as well as something that's great for those of us who have sewn for many years. It's just a great project. I hope you make one or 10 and I hope to see them on the Facebook group. I hope you share what you came up with. I'll see you next time right here at Marie's Scrappy Creations. And remember, be kind out there. The world needs more of that.